سو بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم احمد ہو وصلی علیہ رسول الکریم اما بعد a lot of people have been asking me this question so i want to deal with it and a lot of the issues that go around the reason this question is asked is putin corrupt okay uh and the answer is probably he can't be in a position that he's in without being corrupt but then this you see they they say small minds think about people and average minds think about events and great minds think at a civilizational level and this is the reason that the quran does not talk about specific people as such but quran leaves it open as an archetype as a civilizational or a human reality so for example we have the term in the quran firaun now firaun there were many firauns but firaun is not just a specific person even though he is because that archetype that idea and that characteristic has to manifest itself in some person so the specific exists but also the universal exists the archetype exists so the quran does not try to name people and the quran does not try to name places as such as a general rule why because quran is not a petty book that wants to talk about this person and that person and that person no this is not the intent of the quran the quran wants to give guidance and the guidance is based upon archetypes so small minds talk about people is imran khan good or bad no nope, not the issue more is the issue is what type of archetype does he represent is putin good or bad i'll give you an example <clears throat> so you can understand the situation as it is i really find i really find the intellectual level of even thinking muslims go down it's like we have a, a hole in our bucket of our head we can't think for ourselves and so we have to borrow ideas from christians and other groups to and and then we create a uh, a psychosis where we're cut off from reality and that's what shaitan wants so on the one side you understand the world is you know uh the world is at the end of times is coming and on the one side you understand that the world is not going as it should and then you then instead of studying the quran what you should be doing you start what borrowing ideas from others and trying to fit them into the quran and so people ask the question is putin corrupt or uncorrupt let me ask you this question a person opens a clothing store very simple example a person opens a clothing store in this clothing store just like muslims in america in the beginning hijab wasn't a fashion probably in great britain and other places hijab wasn't such a big fashion it be- started becoming a fashion a trend amongst muslims in the 1990s so let's say if this store was opened before the 1990s the person did not have hijabs and abayas and thobes and all those things in his store why because it wasn't a demand people weren't asking for it people weren't coming to his store and saying hey do you sell hijabs let's say it's a muslim brother or a muslim sister and she has this store and she's selling normal clothes she just has a clothing store now when the trends of society change and people are interested in having hijab and people are interested in wearing islamic attire then she also starts or he the store owner also starts carrying the hijab and the abaya and so on and so forth do you see what i'm saying so now will we say oh this person is corrupt or this person has true iman or doesn't have true iman or was never religious and now is religious does it matter no because this is an islamic store not because of the owner this is a 
you can say a Muslim store, not Islamic store, but this is a Muslim store. Why? Because it sells hijabs. and so. But the hijab is not being sold because the person is some really pious, high person who never did any sin. No. But because that's the demand of the society. What, when you look at the ayah that has to do with those people, that identify themselves as Christians rather than Judeo-Christian, right? Those people who identify themselves as Christian, not with those who identify themselves as Judeo-Christian. When you look at that idea, are you thinking of a specific person or are you thinking of a society. I'm going to try to make this clear again. Let me share with you the verses of the Quran that I am referring to. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, بَعْدَ أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَلَا تَجِدَنَّ أَشَدَّ النَّاسَ عَدَاوَةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا you will definitely find in the future the most severe in adawa for those who have true faith true iman who are on the haq the yahud and those who are pagans Then what will you find at that time? Now, is it referring to a specific Yehud? Is it referring to a specific believer? Is it referring to a specific pagan? No. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلَا أَقْرَبَهُمْ مَوَدَّةً لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And you will find the closest to the believers. Those who are believers who say, who identify themselves as inna nasara. We are Christians. And we are not Judeo-Christian as other parts of the Quran. And when the word Yahud comes with another group, I want to talk about this today too. When the word Yahud, for example, over here, Yahud wal ladina ashraku. Yahud and those that became, the, those that are pagans. And Christians... And the, the Yahud and those that are Christians. When this Yahud becomes attached to a, another group of identity. Okay? So this is an interesting phenomenon. And over here you find Yahud and Walladina Ashraku and those that commit shirk coming together in their antagonism towards the believers. Why? Well, you will find, certainly find those closest to the believers. Mawaddatan. What is mawadda? Mawadda is that exchange of kindness that is reciprocated. That you do kindness to someone, they will do kindness to you, and then you do kindness to them, and they will do kindness to you. This is the same word used in Quran for the husband and wife relationship, a relationship in which... Uh, Intimacy and kindness and friendship is reciprocated with one another. And you will certainly find the closest amongst you are those who reciprocate kindness to you. For the believers, those that we are true Christians. We are a Christianity that has not become Zionist. We are a Christian who are true to our book. And this is not about a person. It is about an archetype. This is because in that society of theirs, they have priests. And monks. And they have a quality that they do not do takabur. They're not proud, as no one should be proud. No one should be arrogant in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But that means that there is another society that does not have priests, 
that does not have monks, that is proud before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is the Yahud, there is the Walladina Ashraku, and then there are those that say, Inna Nasara, we are Christians, and then there are those people who have in their society to prove that they live up to that archetype of Inna Nasara, they have priests, and they have monks, and they don't have takabur as a result in that society because those priests and those monks teach the people in that society. They have enough influence in that society to affect that society. So now, if you go back to that store, if someone is selling hijab in that store, the owner of the store could be corrupt. But they are selling the hijab and the Islamic attires or the Muslim attires because that's the need of society. If Putin talks about religion, it is not because he's not corrupt, but because this is this, the direction of society. Putin could be a closet Muslim. His, his wife was supposedly Muslim. I don't know. He could be the most corrupt. He has a former background in KGB. Does it matter? What matters, according to the Quran, is not the people as such, but rather the trends of and the, the the civilizational trends of society. And so, don't ask me if Putin is corrupt, because Putin does according to what society demands. Whether he is sincere with it or not is irrelevant. Does the Christian people of Russia represent a Christianity that stands before the godless society that NATO and the U.S. want to create? Does Russia represent, dear Christians, a society that will stand up with those Christians in America who are not happy with the godless and secular laws of this country? Will the Christians of America and United Kingdom be happy that Russia standing up against lifestyles that are against religious teachings and Russia is standing up for a religious way of life? This is the question. It is not about, you don't have to believe Putin is an angel. No one is saying Putin is a wali of Allah. What is being said is the role a certain society is playing. So, let us understand this. Now, there's a few other things I want to bring to your attention. See, we have this idea that is completely outside the context of the seerah of the Prophet. Now, let me explain what I mean. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, لَقَدْ كَانَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ أُسْوَةُ الْحَسَنَةِ Indeed, in the Messenger of Allah is the best of examples. And the Prophet dealt with all the types of groups that the Muslims would deal with till the Day of Judgment. He dealt with the Christians. He dealt with the Jewish community. He dealt with atheists. He dealt with the pagans. He dealt with them all. And so, in the Prophet is the best of examples. He's the best example for as a businessman. He's the best example as a husband. He's the best example as a military strategist. He's the best example in all walks of life. And so therefore, nothing can happen. As Imam Malik has also quoted, a quote that goes back to Abu Bakr radiallahu an, that لا يصنه آخر هذه الأمة إلا بما صلها صلها أولها the آخر of this Ummah will not be reformed except on the same pattern the early Ummah was formed. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said that the last part of my Ummah will be like the first part of my Ummah, the last shower. So the last shower will be similar to the first shower. 
And this is not just in terms of spirituality, but also according to the challenges that will be before us. Now, the idea that there is one global power that controls everything, this is an anti-Quranic idea. It is against the Quran. This idea that there is one powerful group that kind of like manipulates the whole world in the direction that it wants. You have just given and the shaitan all the power that he's looking for at a psychological level. Once a companion of the Prophet was going with Nabi Muhammad wasallam, and the camel of the Prophet slipped. And the Sahabi said, Cursed be shaitan. And the Prophet said, Say Bismillah. Because when you say Bismillah, shaitan becomes small. Don't give credit to shaitan, especially more than it is deserved. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says himself that when Allah when Daud killed Jalut, Allah said, Walawla dafullaha nasa ba'dahum bi ba'din la fasadatil art. If there was only one power in the world, there would be fasad in the world. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in another part of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that that if there was one power in the world and the fasad was to spread around the world, the churches and the synagogues and the mosques would be demolished. That means that shaitan wants to demolish these, the, the synagogues, the true synagogues, the churches, not Judeo-Christian based uh, synagogues, the churches and the synagogues and the mosques where the name of Allah is taken. Because where the name of Allah is taken, people are not, they don't have takabur. Because they surrender to Allah according to their knowledge that they have at that time. And so, this I, look, I'll give you many, many historical examples. For example, the Freemasons. Did the Freemasons fight against each other? Were there not Freemasons in Turkey with the young Turks fighting against the British? Were there not Freemasons in the Civil War of America where the northern uh, Freemasonaries were fighting the southern Freem Freemasonaries? Was America not fighting against uh, Brit Britain? Freemasonaries were not in Britain when America, the founding fathers of America were not Freemasons. So this idea that, you know, there's this one global power and they control everything, this, and, and that they, they, they caused the wars and because there is truth to it. But this is not the only formula that, you know, create order through disorder and, you know, this he uh, Hegelian dialect that's taking place in the world. This is not the only thing that by which the world runs. Oh, everyone's uh, sold out. Even if everyone is sold out, they still have their own inclinations and their own belief systems and their own everything. So this is why the the Freemasons of Britain fought against the Freemasons of America because things are not in, shaitan does not control people. And the wars don't happen when to both sides both agree with one another. I'll give you an example. If there's this, you know, this evil that's taken over the world. Yes, there's evil. Don't, min sharri ma khalaq. There are evil people. The Dajjal is evil. His plans are evil. But the average human beings are going according to their belief system, according to what they're brainwashed. If they're brainwashed to believe that we can make a better society and better things and create better things and better ways of doing things than Allah has, which Shaitan tells us that he will make people do, then that's what they believe. I'll give you, any, you know, this example. Why would, why would the Yehud, right, in Palestine, have all of their brothers, what, put uh, the thing on their arm? Why would they do that? If they're all so enemies, why would they have their own people take this? Can you explain that to me? Under your view of the world where there's this one big entity evil and these people are all evil. You, if you can't explain that, you don't understand the world. 
The reason they all took this is not because they're they're like, oh yeah, I'm with Satan. I pledge my allegiance to Satan. I'm going to hurt myself because Satan wants me to hurt me. Or I'm going to hurt my people. No, because they bought into the false ideas. Tilka amaniyuhum. These are the false ideas that they believe in. They've convinced themselves of godless ideas. This is the main culprit. This is the main way of shaitan leading people astray, is to convince people of false ideas. That is the way of shaitan, is to convince people of false ideas, that he gets the whole society to do something that they shouldn't be doing. Not because there is some one power, so Putin is part of this global uh, agenda and the other side is part of the global agenda and they're fighting each other because they have some... Ult- this is not what's happening. The main, if you look at the seerah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, the I, the clash was a clash of ideas. Which is the false idea. Which is the true idea. This is why Quran uses words like da'wah. Because you're trying to convince people of a certain idea. Tabligh, convey, wajahid bihi jihadan kabira. Do a big jihad with this Quran. Convey the ideas of this Quran. Hatta yasma kalam Allah. Let them hear the words of Allah. Because the main thing, everyone has ideas. And it is people who have bought false ideas which is also represented with the idea of idols. People either believe in false idols, false ideas, okay? Now, when you look at the world in this sense, how, many, uh, how much a person believes in false ideas? And how much does the person have a sense of reality, of truth in him? Now every person is different, and every politician is different, and every group is different, no matter what, other associations they may have. You know, if somebody is part of the United Nations and they're part of the satanic uh, agenda of the United Nations, or they're part of some other group, whether it's the Freemasons or the whatever other groups, or they are the bankers, they're not all equal in their thinking of the ideas that they have bought. But the world, the world's essential difference Right now, the essential, 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 essential difference is between the people that have bought in godless ideas versus the people that want to return back to tradition. The tradition of of Islam. Okay, the And, and for the Christians, it would be the cr- tradition of Christians. And for the Jews, it would be the tradition of Judaism. Rather than what is today is better than yesterday. This is modernity. And what is tomorrow will be better than today. This is modernity. And this direction in which society is going in, where it's breaking away from its tradition, right? So that the secular Muslim is more comfortable talking to a secular Jew and a secular Christian. And a Muslim that is traditional, like me, I'm much more comfortable talking to a traditional Christian who believes in family values. Right, who's not happy with the way society is going because of religious and traditional reasons. So this, don't over-exasperate and try to put everybody in this one black and white bucket. You have to understand the world and people and human psyche and you have to understand at which level was the Prophet fighting, وسلم, which is the war of ideas. That was the main thing. And each group had their identity. The Christians were Christians. Yes, sometimes the Yahud and Mushrikeen, they joined forces together in the time of the Prophet ﷺ. But they had their own identities too. So it's not simple as, oh, they're all... And, and this idea that two, part, two sides are fighting each other, but yet they belong to the same global elite. Or... This idea that cannot be explained without a proper understanding of why uh, the the evil ones would have their own people take the take the thing on their arm. You can't explain this from these ideas that you've bought. Uh, you know these unbalanced ideas bought from some of the Christian brothers. You have to go according to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet, and you have to have a balanced view 
of what is happening in the world. Okay, balanced view does. By that I mean that you cannot have one formula like the Hegelian dialectic to explain everything. That's just uh, not smart. Okay, so and uh, and then what happens is then you borrow from other anybody who is against the authority. Uh, you start listening to them. It could be flat Earth. It could be the you know uh, any of these other Christian groups, so on and so forth. And this is very very problematic and subhanallah those people who became awake are now losing their brain losing they're going into a psychosis breaking touch with reality and they don't understand how the world is working and they don't understand the importance of of ideas in all of this uh, and the ideas that shaitan is selling versus the ideas that islam wants us to have and the clash between the ideas, they're not worried about the clash of ideas, but rather they've gone into this kind of like la-la land of, oh, there's this global elite and they're doing everything and that just answers everything. It's What about, you know, the, the war of ideas, which is the most important aspect of the seerah, has been totally negated and unlooked at and everything has been simplified in a way that makes fun of, uh, of, of your view of Islam. Uh, Let's look at uh, some headlines to make my point a little bit more clear. So, dubbed chief exorcist as Kremlin, Kremlin turbocharges satanic power over Ukraine invasion. In a sense, this is interesting because this is showing that jinns are being used on both sides. But Putin dubbed chief exorcist. Okay. This is, it doesn't matter if Putin is good or bad. This is where society is doing, what society is doing, what Christianity is doing. That Christianity is a growing phenomenon in Russia, okay? And so it's, it's, you know, people ask the wrong questions. It's not about this person or that person. We're talking about global changes, Claims Russian troops need to de-Satanize Ukraine criticized as a holy war. Comparisons made. Okay. So on the one side, you have uh, the people that want a religious life. And another side, you have people that want to, to, in a sense, have a godless life, an atheistic life, a life that has no religious morals and does not want to bring God into the conversation of humanity, wants us to live and accept lifestyles that are completely against. Desperate Putin portrays Ukraine and the West as satanic. So, yeah, it's possible he is uh, doing this because this is what he knows will galvanize his community. This is what he knows will galvanize his people. Okay, This is what he knows will work with the Russian people, meaning there is a change amongst Russian people. Okay, so uh, let's see what we have here. Holy War. Russia now depicts Ukraine. Okay, uh, now depicts Ukraine invasion in spiritual terms. Okay, um, Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Muhammad. Putin dubbed fighter of the Antichrist. As desatanization rhetoric escalates, okay. So this is the idea that whether he's like the person in the store, are they using religion as a way just to make more money, or is the person in the store uh, sincere? Does it matter as long as that is the trend of society? Everybody wants to go to a store uh, and buy hijab now. That's Russian anti-cultist. The operation in Ukraine is a crusade against Satanism. So this is how the intention, the intention, the intention of the people of the people of Russia, the Christian people, the traditional people of Russia is. Russia to send priests to war in Ukraine. And these are the priests that if I sat with and had a conversation with them, me and these priests would have more things in common than me and some secular Muslim who is a CEO of some corporate America and is part of the world, uh, you know, economic forum. And me and him would, you know, see very little things eye to eye. Okay. Uh, let us 
now continue over here. Bismillah walhamdulillah. Um, this is a Russian. Uh, the rush. Uh, the future belongs to Muslims. Who is saying this? A Russian Orthodox uh, archpriest. Okay, we are closer to the teachings of Jesus, and uh, Muslims are were closer to the teachings of Jesus than Christians. Okay, this is what a preacher is saying in Russia. So these are realities of that society. These are realities of that society. And it doesn't matter where Putin stands uh, in this. And this is just an example of Freemasonry and the Civil War, Brothers United, that in a time of great division, because Brothers of the Freemason were against Brothers of the Freemason. That was the situation. And in fact, I don't know if you know, but there was a priest uh, in Russia that was killed. Killed. Can you believe it? Killed. Russian priest killed for saying things against Islam, for uh, saying things against Islam. I don't know if you all know this. Okay. Uh, uh, Orthodox priest murdered in Moscow for his anti-Muslim stance. So, you know, this is like absolutely unthinkable for a Muslim that uh, something like this would happen. Masked gunman kills Russian priest at Moscow. Okay. Uh, Russian priest who criticized Islam assassinated at, in his church. Okay. So, to, it is, is, Rush, is Putin this or Putin that? Uh, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can use anyone for anything. Uh, the Prophet sallallahu said, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can use a rajulun fasiq li yu'ayyidu hazaddin. The Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, kama qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Allah can use somebody who is even a fasiq, an evildoer for the purpose of his deen. Okay? And so, that is very important to understand. It's very important to understand that where to, where, what, you know, when you look at that you're on the side of Allah and they're on the side of Satan, what that means what that means and what that should mean for you psychologically. So let me just talk about that, but let me first start off here. Okay, now let me go on to the next point. Now in this regard, I want to share with you a hadith of the Prophet wasallam that is in Adab al-Mufrad written by Imam Bukhari rahmatullahi I'm going to read to you this narration of the Prophet wasallam. Uh, so it says, كُنَّا جَلُوسٌ إِنْدَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم فَجَاءَ رَجُلٌ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْبَدَايَةِ so we were sitting with Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. The companions, of the Prophet say, and somebody from the desert came alayhi hubbatu sijan. So he had a hubba, a, a like a you can say a clo cloak uh, or a robe with borders on it, like a beautiful, uh, you, you know, rich. He looked rich. Hatta qama ala rasin Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam until he came and stood right before the head of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. فَقَالْ إِنَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ And then now he's looking at the other companions of the Prophet and he says, you know, this man of yours, meaning Muhammad وسلم, إِنَّ صَاحِبُكُمْ قَدْ وَضَعَ كُلُّ فَارِسٍ This man of yours, this companion of yours, this what he wants to do. What does Muhammad want to do? He wants to make every person who's riding a horse to be thrown down, meaning every rich person to be thrown down. Or he said in a different way the same thing. He wants to put down every person who is riding a horn. And he, Muhammad وسلم, wants to raise every shepherd. He wants to bring the status up of the shepherd and the person who ride, people who are riding horses, he wants to throw them down. This is what he's up to. Okay, This is the idea he wants to promote. A, you know, he, I guess he had some idea of uh, a like a very rudimentary concept of, of of communism or socialism that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he comes to the masjid he stands before the Prophet and looks at the companion and says you know what this man wants to do this man wants to throw down every rich person and he wants to bring up every poor person what did the Prophet do the Prophet grabbed him by the borders of his robe the beautiful borders that showed that he فَأَخَذَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ بِمَجَامِعِ حُبَّتِهِ He grabbed him by the 
the the board the the that portion of his robe that had the borders okay فقال, and the prophet says he said the prophet وسلم, indeed i see on you clothes of someone who has no intelligence this is what the prophet said وسلم, i see on top of you clothes of someone who has no intelligence he grabbed the, him by the border of his robe and he said i see you ala ara alayka libas man lam yaqal i would like to say the sunnah of the prophet one day to somebody but ala ara alayka libas man la yaqal i see a new clothes of someone who has no intelligence thumma qal then after the prophet continued he said in that statement because the purpose of this conversation is something different but you'll see where i'm taking this in nabi allah nuh indeed the nabi nuh alayhi salatu wassalam lamma hadarahu alwafa'u when he came close to his death qala libnihi he said to his children inni qasun ilayka wasiyata i am going to leave you with a wasiya with an advice a'muruka ithnain wa nahaka 'anin ithnain i'm going to command you to two things and i'm going to stop you from two things a'muruka and i command you bi la ilaha illallah that i command you with la ilaha illallah fa inna as-samawati as-sab'i wal ardi nas-sab'i indeed if the seven heavens and the seven earths right لَوْ وُضِعَ فِي كَفَّةٍ وَوُضِيَتْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ كَفَّةٍ لَرَجَحَتْ بِهِنَّ He said, the Prophet said, if you were to take the seven heavens and the seven earths and put it in one part of the scale, and if you put لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ on the other side of the scale, then لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهُ would weigh heavier than everything in the heavens and the earth. So the time you take to say la ilaha illallah one time is heavier than any construction or a tall building or the billions of dollars somebody can make okay then he says sallallahu alaihi wasallam repeating the same idea in a different way the prophet nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh ولو ان السماوات السبع والارضين السبع كن حلقه مبهمه if the seven heavens and the seven earths all of them that are encircled in darkness okay laqam laqamas hun la ilaha illallah subhanallah bi hamdihi the prophet said that if all of the heavens and all the earths were put on one scale okay in a in in the form of a ring okay and you had la ilaha illallah subhanallah bi hamdihi on the other side of course that side that has the kalimas of allah the words of allah are stronger than the uh, were, than the creation فان صلاه كل شيء بها يرزقها كل شيء everything has a prayer but allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives people rizq via the statement la ilaha illallah subhanallah bihamdihi yarzuq kull shay'in wa nahaka an shirk wal kibr and i forbid you from having shirk meaning partners with allah or equals with allah and from having what kibr from having a uh, pride arrogance in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when people realize that no matter what we create in this in this world of seven heavens and seven earths no matter what you create a building a house that is not equal to one word of allah that's not equal to la ilaha illallah it's not equal to subhanallah it's not equal to one alhamdulillah you say one subhanallah you get one tree in, in jannah that is more valuable than the entire creation that we see so when people realize this they will not have kibr they will not have what 
uh, arrogance. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those Muslims who don't have arrogance. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us understand that not having arrogance is an integral part to accepting the truth in the battle of ideas. And so my advice to the Christian brothers and sisters in America and around the world is that to recognize, recognize what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is doing and to recognize that the teachings of your Bible okay, and the teachings of us have many similarities and that we stand for a traditional way of life just like you. And we stand with Jesus just like you. And that we have to realize that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ultimately, and this for the Muslims, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in control. Not some globalists, not some shaitanic power, not the Illuminati, not the bankers. Not, the focus is to know what is happening in the world, but it should not become, consume you with fear, and should not consume you with overwhelmingness that, oh my God, what am I going to do? This Satan is taken over everywhere. No, that's what shaitan wants. You know, shaitan wants you to have fear. This is why Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, when he was fighting against the magicians, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept, فَأَوْجَسَ فِي خِيفَةَ Musa. Musa found khawf in himself, fear in himself. Allah says, لَا تَخَفْ إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ الْأَعْلَى You are the Nabi of Allah. You will be the Supreme. So if you're a Muslim, you will be Supreme. You have nothing to fear. These globalists, they have only they can only do whatever Allah allows them to do. It's that simple. No global agenda, no globalist, no Satanist, no nothing, no 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 malhama, no dajjal, no nothing can do anything without the permission of Allah. But if you don't follow the Sunnah of Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you know Sutul Kahf starts with what word? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Why? Because that should be the attitude. You should be able to face all these trials and difficulties. But you understand everything is in the power of Allah. Otherwise, you're going to study Islamic eschatology and fall into a psychosis like so many have. So make sure your Iman is strong first. Make sure you're trying to finish the Qur'an every month first. Make sure you're doing your spiritual exercises so that as the information of the world comes to you and you can observe, you know, people read the news, get affected by it. It should not, it should, you're, you should not be affected by the coming of Dajjal or not. You should be doing the same thing. Because you believe in Allah. If there's no Dajjal coming, for example, you should be doing the same thing that if Dajjal is coming. You should be doing nothing different in a sense of your attitude and your emotions. It should not affect you. Just like the Sahaba were not affected when they were told, oh, this big army of a, we're only 60 people and an army of 100,000 is coming. They weren't, Khalid bin Walid was not affected by that. When the children, when the Prophet ﷺ was, was telling the people of the Dajjal, the children of Medina said, they had this attitude, O Prophet of Allah, if he comes here, we will throw stones on him, on him till he has to leave. Right? The companions of the Prophet believed that the, uh, Ibn Sayyad, one of the people in the time the Prophet had, it was a, it was a form of Dajjal or was Dajjal. Did they like fear him? Or anything like that, or they become overwhelmed by this idea of like, oh my God, there's going to be some global conspiracy. No, they, the Quran, and the Prophet, and we must stick to the battle of ideas. That's where the real battle is. The real battle is not uh, learning more about the uh, the the, the power that the globalists have, the, I, it is about understanding their false ideas and countering those false ideas. It is about how strong you are. How, do you have a jama'ah? Do you have a plan of hijrah? Do you have fatuwa? Do you have a real understanding of what's the difference between uh, feminism versus femininity? Do you have an understanding of the Islamic ideas, 
Do you know how to hunt Islamically if you're out of the city tomorrow? Do you know how to do a janazah tomorrow if somebody dies? Do you know how to lead prayers and do Juma khutbah and so on and so forth? What have you done of the things that you should be doing to actually prepare for that time where there will be no electricity? Instead of focusing your time, 90% of your time on flat earth stupidity, right? You should be focusing your time on what? On what you will actually do when you have to leave the city. Ilman la yanfa. This knowledge that does not benefit. If it's not a knowledge talked about in Quran, directly or indirectly, it is not something that benefits people. And just like the Prophet said وسلم, to this man who had this idea that the Prophet wants to form a type of communism or make the poor people up and the rich people down, right? The Prophet said, I see on you clothes of, of, that show your lack of stupidity. It is extremely stupid, stupid, stupid of a person to spend hours and hours on flat earth and yet prepare nothing for when they will do hijrah. It is extremely stupid and unintelligent of someone to study flat earth to the point he opposes believers because believers should not have a problem with one another. But when you start having a ghil, a, a negative attitude towards the believers, because you believe in something that's not even a requirement of iman, nor of aqidah, nor was there any ijma on this. In fact, the opposite. And so, and you're trying to study every news of the world, every every conspiracy of the world, every news of the world, everything of the world. You're trying so much, but you haven't prepared yourself for what is really needed to be done to become part of the last shower. You haven't, you've spent hours listening to news that has nothing to do with Islamic eschatology. Listening to news that has nothing to do with Islamic eschatology. Because you're chasing every every trick every distraction and you're so busy chasing every distraction that you've lost why you first got into this so the first thing is to start reading quran and this and to lose all fear you may die tomorrow there could be we're already at a point where we're on borrowed days it could be 10 years of borrowed days, could be 12 years of borrowed days, could be 2 years of borrowed days, but we're on borrowed days. We're on borrowed days. We are on borrowed days. So get ready for real and stop wasting time and stop trying to learn about things that have no benefit for you in the hereafter. That have no benefit for you in carrying the message of Islam to the next phase. That, have, that do not organize us and make us stronger in that vacuum that's about to be created in, for the whole world. That when the cities collapse, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in clear, in, in ambiguous terms, that it's going to be a terrible calamity. And millions and millions of people will die, if not more. And so if you're not ready, to go and if you're not ready to die I mean, if you're not spiritually ready and you're watching news that has nothing to do with Islamic eschatology what are you doing wasting your time why are you wasting your time shaitan just has you running a goose chase there's certain things we will never know in this world but if it's not about the things the Prophet in the Quran talked about in terms of Islamic eschatology, put your there's nothing there to be found. Because if there was something there to be found, our Prophet ﷺ, he would have told us. So those of you that who understand that we live in Akhiru Zaman, you must think seriously about what needs to be done for the next phase of the Muslim Ummah. And start organizing people, start making hijrah plans, and start fighting the battle. And while you're here, 
fight the battle of ideas, the false ideas. Ideas of feminism, capitalism, socialism, uh, even parts of Darwin, Darwinism, especially at the philosophical level. The, the false ideas of the world, how the system has failed, how the how the how the 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 that Islam is the solution, that Islam is the future. That's where the focus needs to be. The focus needs to be that what are the solutions that Islam gives? Okay, that's where you need to be learning. Can you prove? Uh, what can you do to counter as many of our youth leaving Islam? Okay, what can you do to? to do da'wah to the non-Muslims. So inshallah I end here today. Aqulu qawli hadha astaghfirullah li wa lakum li sa'al muslimina wal muslimat. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.